times you feel unworthy or you, you struggle with believing that your destiny is still on, when that is the very moment you remind yourself and the devil, I've been declared righteous. This is what's happening at The Rock. Grace and peace, freedom family and friends. These are your midweek announcements. We have resumed baby dedications. If you desire to have your child dedicated, please contact the church office. Do you enjoy computers, technology, or media equipment? The media ministry may be the place for you. We are looking for members who would like to operate cameras, soundboards, screens, and more. If you're interested or would like more information, please contact our connection team leader, April, at 601-480-2913 or send an email to the email address on your screen. Mark your calendar for Freedom Rocks Rock Community Resource Center. Every third Saturday from 9 until noon, you will have access to food, toiletries, life essentials, and much more. And there is no cost because it's free at Freedom. For the month of May, the third Saturday falls on May 21st. Elder Elect Betty Cole is the Outreach Director. And for more information, please contact the number or email address on your screen. This is a final call for all graduates, whether you're in high school or college. Graduate recognition profile sheets must be submitted by this Sunday. Please see Elder Elect Tommy Winston in the foyer following service if you have any questions. The Ministry of Care will meet every fourth Monday at 6 p.m. via Zoom. Elder Cedric Dubos is the Connection Team Leader. If you have a birthday, an anniversary, or you would just like to give someone a shout out, send us your email to freedomrock at frcfc.org. These have been your midweek announcements and we ask you to keep all announcements in mind and be reminded that Freedom Rock Cathedral is locally committed and globally commissioned. Grace and peace, Freedom family. We thank God for your presence here on today. Listen, we know that there is no better place that you can be than right here with us for a powerful word from heaven. Bishop is preparing to minister an amazing word throughout the month of May, and the series is titled Righteousness, Wisdom for Living the Best Life. Don't you want to know how to live your best life? Haven't you just gotten tired of just living in mediocrity or just barely existence? Man, I want to know how to live the life that God has ordained. And we believe God by faith that that's what Bishop is going to minister to us during the month of May. We're preparing now to go to our worship and arts ministry, and then right after that, you're going to hear a powerful word from heaven from none other than Bishop Hedgeman. And then I'll be right back with you. There's nobody greater than our God. Come on. Nobody greater. Greater. Stronger than you, it don't exist. It don't exist. What's more powerful, more in control, it don't exist. It don't exist. The world can rescue me, supply all my needs, they don't exist. They don't exist. The world can save my soul and make me whole, they don't exist. Thank you for stronger than you. It don't exist. It don't exist. What's more powerful, more in control? It don't exist. It don't exist. Those can rescue me, 
supply all my needs. They don't exist. They don't exist. No words can save my soul now. Make me whole. They don't exist. Cause you and peace to you saints of God thank you for tuning in for the word on tonight I pray you're having a great week and you're holding on to the word that God has prophetically announced to us in this hour fulfilled everything God is saying to us is to position us to see what he has promised prophesied and recorded in scripture fulfilled well let's go into the word of the Lord because we believe God has something to say to us on tonight. We're continuing in our series entitled Righteousness, Wisdom to Living the Best Life. Not a best life, but the best life that God has willed for all of us as we tap into righteousness. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6, verse number 33. We'll read it in the King James Version. Praise the Lord. The best life is where God can add to us. Amen. Add to us. Flourish us. Increase us. 
Hallelujah. The Bible says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto you. Let's look at the Amplified, if you will, because the Amplified amplifies the expression of righteousness. It says, but seek, aim at, strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right. And then all these things taken together will be given to you besides. Praise the Lord. Again, righteousness, his way of doing and being right. Well, we're going to continue in what is part two of this series tonight, which we introduced Sunday, entitled The Compensation of the Righteous. Glory to God. The Compensation of the Righteous. Now, we must first separate the word righteous from righteousness so we can understand it. And then we're going to show you in scriptures how they correlate, okay? So when we hear the word righteous, we're being taught, as the scripture states, it means standing. Righteous is a position. It is a position that Christ died for us to have. And our belief in him, not our works, is what gives us right standing with God. Praise the Lord. Right standing with God, a position. Righteousness, unlike righteous being a position, speaks more to our lifestyle, okay? We look at it this way. It's how we treat people, all right, in a way that pleases God. So righteous position, righteousness, a lifestyle that gives us, watch this, regulations on how we are to treat others, okay? So within this series, we've defined righteousness figuratively as pleasing God in the treatment of others, of self, excuse me, and others with regard to blessings, health, and eternal interests. So when we're talking about righteousness, we're talking about a lifestyle that we submit to. It's already been scripted that governs, it controls, all right? It guides, it directs us in how we are to treat ourselves and others. And we connect that to blessing, glory to God. We connect that to health and healing and wholeness. We connect that to eternal entrance, all right? So let's go deeper as we begin to look at righteousness and the compensation of the righteous. We said Sunday worth repeating that we must redact, okay? We must redact. That means to black out. It's just like you take a black marker and erase or cover up the ability to see or, or something or comprehend something any longer. I can't see it. It's blacked out. That's when you redact something. We must redact ideas that have been told to us, some we have adopted, some we have assumed, that reduces compensation to material or mammon only. There are a lot of people who believe the only way they could be rewarded, okay, is by money, or the only way they could be re rewarded is by tangible, material things, things that come with a receipt. But it is unrighteous, I'm gonna say it again, it is very much so, unrighteous, for us to confine compensation to money. We limit the hands of God to only being able to provide us with money. When we think this way, it, it interferes with us being as his righteousness. Because when we only think we can be compensated by money, we, we close all options that doesn't materialize in currency or money, or cash, or check. When you have this mentality, it's going to lead to dishonesty, compromise, and ultimately corruption, because you're going to always choose the direction that results in money, all right? And the Bible talks about mammon. Uh, there's, there's something that is called the uh, iniquity of mammon, the sin of mammon, all right? And that's when we uh, pursue money at all costs. And that's where the compromise comes in. That's where the corruption comes in. That's where the dishonesty comes in, all right? And so we've discovered that when you're talking about being his righteousness, when you're talking about a lifestyle that pleases God, 
God rewards us. Hear this. He compensates us with favor, not money. I need somebody to type that out there. Favor, in all caps, not just money. Favor, not just money. Let's go to Psalms 84 and 11. Psalms 84 and 11. Praise the Lord. We'll start in the New Living Translation. Psalms 84 and 11. Look at what the word says here from the New Living Translation. The Bible says the Lord God is our sun and shield. He gives us grace and glory. The Lord will withhold no good thing from those who do what is right. Do what's right. Those who are living as his righteousness. He said he will withhold no good thing. Now he says, I give you grace. Amplified says, I give you favor. But this favor, watch this, will cause you to receive good things. I would rather have good things than just money. And I'm going to help you understand that. Why you should want to be compensated with favor and not just money. Help me, Bishop. I will. There are times in life, watch this, where you can have the money in your possession and still not get what you need. You need favor. Okay? When we were uh, expanding our vision here on this campus and we envisioned uh, impacting the early educational development of, 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 of people. And so we, we wanted to birth forth a daycare academy, okay? Two, two within one roof. However, the grounds in which we identified had a house and a garage shed that was in the way. Watch this. And so we were planning to go ahead and just de demolish it so that we can erect what God showed us to erect, to build, to construct. But they stopped us and said, you cannot touch that house nor that garage until you find someone who is within state regulations approved to demolish buildings with asbestos. But we had the money. Cutting a check wasn't a problem. I'm not talking about no financing. I mean, cutting a check, we read it. We, we sat here for several weeks with the money, but we couldn't find, at the time, only two people within the state of Mississippi who was approved to remove buildings with asbestos several years ago. And so we had the money, but we didn't have the right personnel. We needed the favor of God to show up to connect us with those who had the licensure to demolish a building so what God birthed in us could go up. Had the money, but needed favor. You never want to limit what God is wanting to do in your life to just money. Sometimes you need favor. And then there are times, watch this, where you need money. We had the money then. There's another occasion where we needed the money. And watch this, we could not get the money we needed without favor. I told the testimony before, we had to have $100,000 in less than 30 days. And we began to follow instructions from God as it relates to how we went about that. And one individual used his power, his influence, glory to God, to make the right connections and conversations so that we could finish out the money that we needed within that time frame. Now, in that instance, Watch this. We needed the money, but we could not get the money without the favor. So I hope you see how God can do more for you through favor than he can when we just limit him to only being compensated by money. And so as his righteousness, when we begin to treat ourselves and treat others in a way that pleases God, we position ourselves for God to honor that with favor. The woman with the issue of blood didn't need money, even though she had spent all she had. The Bible says she had went through so many specialists. She had seen so many physicians. So guess what more money was going to do? Send her to more specialists, send her to, send her to more physicians, and still be sick. She needed the favor of God. She needed for God to arrange a moment for her to be within the reach of Jesus so the sickness she had that physicians could not cure, the healing of power of God could. I submit to you that on many occasions in your life and in your life to come, 
You may have the money and sometimes you won't have the money. But to see what God wants to do in your life come to pass, you're going to need favor. And when you recognize that you need favor, you commit yourself to living as his righteousness. So we shouldn't love money. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. So our goal is not to love money. Our goal is to love favor. Glory to God. So we must change our affection we have with money and begin to apply that affection to the favor of God. I want the favor of God. And when you want the favor of God, you become intentional about living your life in a way that pleases him. One of the byproducts, again, of having favor and not just money is that when you live your life within the confines of currency, man can police it. Yeah, man can hinder your increase. Man can make your way difficult, but man cannot hinder your favor or police your favor because favor is God engineered. I'm just going to go to one scripture just so we can see that. Let's go to Psalms 90 and 17 amplified. Favor is God engineered. God reminds us that favor is God engineered. When we commit to living as his righteousness, God said, I'll shower you with favor. Thank you, Lord. And favor can manifest as money. Favor can manifest as healing. Favor can manifest as an open door. Glory to God. So again, let's look at Psalms 90. Let's look at verse number 17 amplified. Look what the word of the Lord says. It says, and, the, and let the beauty and the lightfulness and favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Notice he says the favor is of the Lord our God. Favor comes from God. Now, we're getting ready to show you ways in which God compensates us through favor. Now, some of the scriptures we're getting ready to see will use the word righteous, not necessarily the word righteousness. But I want to show you where the Bible says whenever God refers to us as righteous, he's talking about people who are practicing righteousness. So when you're talking about practicing righteousness, making it a lifestyle, you are who the Bible is speaking of when it uses the word righteous. You have right standing, you're pleasing God because of the lifestyle you live and how you treat yourself and others in a way that pleases God. Let's look at 1 John chapter 3, verse number 7. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So righteous speaks of those who practice righteousness. 1 John chapter 3, verse number 7. It says, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is what? Righteous. He that doeth righteousness. He that lives in a way where they please God and how they treat others and everyone else, they are righteous. So we see righteous again is those who, speaks of those who practice righteousness. When you commit yourself to live in this lifestyle that God is speaking to us, you can go everywhere in the Bible where you see the word righteous and you can say God is talking about me. Let's look at the Amplified. Glory to God. Glory to God. Righteousness. Righteousness. When we practice righteousness, we are viewed, coined, as being righteous. Boys, lads, let no one deceive and lead you astray. There it is. He who practices righteousness, who is upright, conforming to the divine will and purpose, thought and action, living a consistently consensuous life is righteous. So here we see again where righteousness speaks to our lifestyle how we live, how we treat others. So let's look at how God compensates us through favor when we are his righteousness. I want you to see this one. The first one you want to add to what you have Sunday is that he compensates us with promises, with promises. He compensates us with promises. So when you start to please God in how you handle difficult people, please God in how you handle your family, please God in how you handle things within your work life, Please, God, in how you handle your interactions with people, God said, I'm going to reward you. I'm going to honor that, and I'm going to honor that with fulfilling my promises to your life. I'm going to cause what I've said about you to become your reality. Specifically, I want to look at tonight promises of provision. 
promises of provision. So when you treat people, when you please God and how you're living and how you're treating people, God said, I'm going to compensate you with promises. Let's go to Proverbs 10 and 3. Let's look at this in the King James Version. Proverbs 10 and 3, King James. The Bible says, the Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish. Did you hear that? God said, I will not allow the soul of the righteous, those who practice righteousness, to famish. But he casts away the substance of the wicked. When we're not righteous, what we call ours, what we boast about, what we put all our trust in, yeah, what you got in deposit, what you got in acres, what you got in asset, the Bible says it will cast away. But when you are righteous, when you are pleasing God and how you live, God said, I'm going to provide for you and I will not allow your soul to suffer famish. Let's look at that, if we will, in another translation. Whichever one you pick, Kim, we'll use that, NLT or NIV. I just want to see it in another verse for us, NLT. The Lord will not let the godly go hungry. What is he saying? I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to make sure, glory to God, you have what you need in every moment and situation of your life. It may not have showed up yet, but when you know you're righteous, when you know you're living as his righteousness, you got to know God is going to come through before Proverbs 10 and 3 fails in my life. So you need to go ahead and declare to those who are living as his righteousness, committed to living as his righteousness, I will always have. Glory to God. I said you need to go ahead and declare that I will always have. Oh, that's glory right there. You need to speak that I will always have. You need to remind yourself of that this week. I will always have. That's why you don't treat people in a way that displeases God because that messes up with God's promise to provide for you. You need to understand, glory to God, every time you do it in a way that pleases God, it may not look rewarding initially, but based on the word of the Lord, you will always have. The Lord has spoken. He said you will never be without. Hallelujah. Go ahead and say that. I will never be without. See, this word hunger, this word famine in the Hebrew is the word ra'ab. Ra'ab. It means, watch this, reoccurring lack, severity. It means that, you know, you, you keep seeing lack over and over, a cycle of being without until the point it becomes so severe that you're in famine, okay? It's beyond poverty, all right? It's severity, but it means reoccurring lack. So there's a promise from God. You need to know this. You need to underline that in your Bible, that as I am living as his righteousness, God has promised promise that I would not see reoccurring lack to the point of severity. So if there is some degree of lack in your life, when you understand this promise that's resting over you, you can go ahead and declare, I'm not broke. I'm just in temporary lack. Hallelujah. Temporary lack, which means I'm just waiting on the word of the Lord to compensate my decision to please God and how I live. Hallelujah. Not permanent lack, temporary lack, because the Bible says God would not suffer you to experience reoccurring lack to the point of severity. If you are experiencing reoccurring lack to the point of severity, you need to look at your degree of righteousness. What areas, in what relationships, and in what capacities your lifestyle is not pleasing to God? Then say you won't see some lack, but it will not be reoccurring to severity. And somebody right now, you're in a low place. You say right now, things are not as great for me. I'm barely, barely making it. I'm surviving. Oh God, I'm not in surplus. I'm not in overflow. I'm in survival. You better know God has said to you, you won't come to famine. Thank you, Lord. Keep pleasing God. He said you will not come to famine. God has promised that you would never be without. Let's go to Psalms 84, 11 through 12. We're going to look at this in the Passion Translation. 
He's promised to provide for you. The word of the Lord says, for the Lord God is brighter than the brilliance of a sunrise, wrapping himself around me like a shield. He is so generous with his gifts of grace, favor, and glory. Those who walk along his paths with integrity will never lack one thing they need, for he provides it all. Did you hear that? That's a promise to those who walk uprightly, to those who walk in integrity, for those who walk in his paths. We're talking about righteousness now. The Bible says you will never lack one thing you need, for he provides it all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Not only that, but there's another promise. There's a promise of a empowered conscious. Yeah, he, he compensates us favorably as it relates to our conscience when we live as his righteousness. The Bible says this, watch this, in Psalms uh, chapter 10, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 7. God said, when you begin to live as my righteousness, my hand covers your mind. The hand of the Lord rests upon your mind. This explains why the enemy tries to get us to act in ways, sometimes in reaction, sometimes in proaction, in approaches that don't please God because he understands as long as you are living righteously and as his righteousness, God is going to compensate you, praise the Lord, with an empowered conscience. The hand of the Lord would be on your mind. Look what the word says in Proverbs 10, verse number 7, King James. The memory of the just is blessed. The memory, they're talking about your conscience, is blessed. In other words, God said, I'm going to preserve your conscience. You want to jot these down from loss? Yeah. Even when you have times when you're forgetting things, you may need a little sleep. You may have a lot on your mind. But, but because of this promise, as long as you are pleasing God, the Bible says God will preserve your mind. A part of blessing your memory is to preserve it from loss. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost will bring things to remembrance. You ain't got to remember everything in every moment. You got to trust that what the Spirit of God knows on the inside of you, he will make known to you when you need it. As long as you're pleasing God. He, not, he, does, not, he does not only preserve you from loss, he preserves us from torment. Torment. See, that's, that, that's the consequence of not treating people in a way that pleases God. We're tormented. The enemy begins to torment us. He begins to, to bother us, and we live with these reservations. We live with these fears. We live with all of this negativity and consequence, always expecting the bad and the worst. That's torment. But the Bible says when you're righteous and you're practicing righteousness, one of the ways favor shows up in your life is that God will bless your memory. Even the things you wish you could do differently, the hand of the Lord will prevent the enemy from tormenting you in that area. So this explains why when we do act in a way that doesn't please God, things begin to mess with our mind. Because we have forfeited the promise, the condition that causes for this promise to rest on our life. Go ahead and declare, my memory is blessed. Oh God, my memory is blessed. Somebody's watching me right now. The enemy has been trying to work in this area. He's been trying to make mess with your head, but I'm declaring what the word of the Lord has said. You are his righteousness and your memory is blessed. Oh God, not only that, he preserves your conscience from confusion. Confusion. That's why we please God, because even when we don't know, God reveals understanding to us. My mind will not be governed. You need to declare that. Say it. My mind, glory to God, will not be governed by loss, torment, confusion, nor resentment. My memory is blessed. The hand of the Lord is over my mind. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But we get this. This is one of the ways favor blesses us. See, what's the use if you got a bunch of money but don't have your mind? What can you do with a lot of money and no mind? Mm. He compensates the righteous 
with an empowered conscience, a blessed conscience. This is another one I like. He compensates us, number two, with answered prayer. Hallelujah. When you commit to pleasing God and how you treat yourself and other people, even the difficult people, God said, one of the ways I'm going to compensate you is by answering your prayer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You see how it's more than money? You, won't, you, you would rather have favor on your prayer life than just money. Because there's some things you're going to pray for that money is not the solution to. Sometimes you're praying that God would change the heart of someone. Money can't do that. Sometimes you're praying that God will soften the heart of someone. Money can't do that. Sometimes you believe in God to stay the hand of the enemy. Money cannot do that. Let's go to James 5 and 16. He compensates us with answer prayer. Glory to God. The Bible says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man or someone who's practicing righteousness availeth much. Look at that in the New Living Translation. Hallelujah. Answered prayer. Confess your sins to each other. Pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person, a person who's practicing righteousness, has great power and produces wonderful results. Their prayers have great power and they produce wonderful results or results that are full of wonder. My God, so oh, that, that results, manifestations, Wonder-like manifestations, things that make it hard for you to believe, is this really happening? Glory to God. Those kind of manifestations, those kinds of answered prayers are reserved for those who are practicing righteousness. That's your win. You say, well, what's, well, why should I give up all this to start treating people right? Some people don't always treat me right. Some people don't, don't, don't do me right. Why should I always do what pleases God? Because you want your prayers answered. Talk, Bishop. Let's go to 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 through 15. You want your prayers answered. You want to be living in the earth in a way where you know you have the favor of answered prayers. The favor of answered prayers. The Bible says, and we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. And since we know he hears us, when we make our request, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. Sound like answer prayer to me? Now let's go back and break this verse down. We'll go back to verse 14 again, okay? So when I, when I say the word he, I want you to say the next two words after that, okay? It says, and we are confident that he hears us. That's right. Okay, let's try it again. When I say he, you say the next two words. And we are confident that he hears us. Whenever we ask for anything that pleases him, and since we know he, what, hears us, when we make our requests, we also know, you finish this after he, that he, what, will give us what we ask for. When you look at what you said after he, you said he will hear us and he will give us what we ask for. He will hear us and he will give us what we ask for. He will hear us, glory to God, and he will give us what we ask for. This is a confidence that comes when we are living as his righteousness. God promised to answer your prayer. Now, he may not answer it within the time frame of your desires, but he will answer your prayer. He will hear us and he will give us what we ask for. He hears and we have. Glory to God. That's what you gain when you commit to righteousness. He hears and we have. This is reserved for those who are practicing righteousness. So you cannot allow another person or a situation or temptation of any kind to rob you of this life of favor in the form of answered prayer. Nothing is worth that. Nothing is worth you forfeiting a life of answer prayer. Let's go to Psalms 34 and 17. Psalms 34 
verse 17, King James. Look at what the word of the Lord says. The righteous. Who are the righteous? Those who are practicing righteousness. That's again at 1 John 3 and 7. 1 John 3 and 7. Notice the doctrine. Notice how that is constantly being repeated in our lesson tonight. Righteousness is those who practice righteousness. Okay? The righteous, those who practice righteousness, cry. And look what happens. And the Lord heareth. But he don't just stop at hearing. Because that means you prayed and he heard you. But that don't mean the answer. We're talking about answer prayer. Favor in the form of answer prayer. He heard us and delivered them out of all of their trouble. Cried. They cried for deliverance. God heard them and he delivered them out of all their troubles. He heard them and he gave them what they asked for. He hear us and we have. He hear us and we have. There it is again in the scripture. Righteousness. When we are living as his righteousness, God favors us with answered prayer. Let's go to Psalms 37. Let's look at this in verse 4 through 6. Hallelujah. Because some of you are saying, well, I'm asking God for this. Uh, uh, but man, man, I, I, I ain't asking for that. You know, uh, you know, we act as though big thing God is intimidated by the things we can't do. Yeah. We insult God like that. We ask God for things that we can do because really when we do it, we act like we got it done. But we're intimidated to ask God for those things we can't do. We'll pray for God to dry out respiratory infection, but we're afraid to ask him to heal us from lupus. Should not be. When you're living as his righteous, you're pleasing God. You got to know that God favors you with answered prayer. Delight thyself also in the Lord. He shall give you the desires of your heart. When we delight in the Lord, when we seek to please him, he gives our heart what to desire. See, the more we begin to please him, the more our heart is to please him. It has to start with delight. No, God, I want to please you. So then God says, as you continue to want, you want to please me? Okay, well, I'm going to start to shape your heart to desire to please me. I'm going to give your heart what to desire. After I give your heart what to desire, you're committed to pleasing me now. Now you're committed to practicing righteousness. So guess what happens next? Verse 5 says, so then you commit your way unto the Lord. I give up my way. I'm going to try it in my way. No, I give up my way and I'm committing my way to you. God, I want to please you, so I'm going to allow you to show me how to do this. And the Bible says when you do that, and you trust also in him. Why? Because some of the things that God will give us to do when we are to please him is not going to make sense. It's not going to satisfy your flesh. That's why righteousness is his way of doing and being, not the way we feeling, not feeling right. Okay? So we got to trust him when God gives us things to do. He instructs us. He prompts us. He speaks to us through messages like this, things to do, and it don't make sense to us. But here's what happens on the other side, hallelujah, of that. Glory to God. The Bible says, and he shall bring it to pass. Whatever your it may be, you know, God said, I'll bring it to pass. Glory to God. And I hear the all of God. I, I feel the rushing of the anointing moving into our lives in this moment. God is saying he will bring it, that thing, to pass. Live for him and he will bring it to pass, whatever your it may be, because he favors us with answer prayer. The last thing that I want to share with us tonight is that God compensates us with seasons of fulfillment. Glory to God. When we commit to living as his righteousness, he compensates us with seasons of fulfillment. Let's look at Hebrews 6 and 10 through 12, Message Bible. This will be our last scripture for tonight. He'll fulfill it. He fulfills it. When we're living as his righteousness, he fulfills it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's why I got to please God. God, give us a heart to please you. Oh, I feel the need to pray that now. God, give us a heart to please you. Where no other human can move us from that place of wanting to please you. Because favor will compensate us for pleasing you with seasons of fulfillment, seasons where God brings it to pass exactly the way he said it. Thank you, Lord. Come on, you got to come up in your faith. He's going to bring it to pass exactly the way he said it. 
Yeah, yeah, come on, you got to come up in your faith. Glory to God. He'll bring it to pass exactly the way he said it, exactly the way you read it. Glory to God. Exactly the way the Spirit of God spoke it in your hearing. Praise the Lord. That's what favor is when God brings it to pass. You have the kiss of God on your life. No matter what situation they put you in, what conditions they put you in, no matter what comes your way, you always rise to the top. You always come through. You always are found triumphant because favor compensates you with answer prayer. Favor compensates you with an empowered conscience, your memory. Favor compensates you, glory to God, hallelujah, with promises of provision. And favor compensates you with seasons of fulfillment. He says, I'm sure that won't happen to you, friends. I have better things in mind for you. Salvation things. God doesn't miss anything. He knows perfectly well all the love you've shown him by helping needy Christians. And that, you keep at it. He said, you keep on pleasing me and how you help others. And now I want each of you, watch this, to extend the, extend the same intensity toward full-bodied hope, full-bodied. He said, the same way you've gone around helping people, I want that same energy towards your expectation. Hope, full-bodied hope, not lacking. Put your neck out there. Dare to believe God for it, for that. And guess what it says? And keep at it till the finish. Don't drag your feet. He says, be like those who stay the course with committed faith, and then, watch the fulfillment, get everything promised to them. Get everything promised to them. That's that fulfillment. That's that fulfillment. God sends this word on righteousness. He's changing the way we live. He's changing our whole thought process. Not about how we are in church, but how we are privately and publicly in our interactions with others. Because if we say yes to this word and we conform to this word, God is saying, you know what the result is going to be? You're going to get everything that was promised to you. Let's look at it in the New Living Translation. Whew. Fulfillment. The realization of something that's been promised, prophesied, or desired. The realization of something that's been promised to you. Something that's been prophesied to you. Something that you desire. That's what fulfillment is, the realization of it. You didn't just hear it. You didn't just read it. You didn't just pray it. You have it. Glory to God. Many times we've mistaken this. We thought we got to fulfillment by how much we shouted. We thought we got to fulfillment, God, by manipulating things, sewing or, or rubbing shoulders with people. We get to fulfillment by living in a way that pleases him. He said, I can't sit here and watch you sacrifice, serve, obey me, say no to sin, refusing to, to live in old paths, giving up good opportunities of pleasure through temptation to please me. I can't let you do that and not fulfill what I promised you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He says, for God is not unjust. He's not unrighteous. He will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers, treating as you still do. Our great desire is that you will keep on loving others as long as life lasts in order to make certain that what you hope for will come true. That's fulfillment. That what you hope for, what you was expecting really became true. Saints of God, this portion of this teaching, the compensation of right, for the righteous, of the righteous is needed to get in your spirit. This is what you keep in mind when pleasing God doesn't appear favorable. 
when doing what pleases God does not feel gratifying. When doing what pleases God sometimes makes things harder and not easier. When doing what pleases God is going to require more time in prayer, a deeper study of his word. When doing what pleases God causes for me to have to lay down some things and never pick them up again. This is what you remind yourself of. That if I please him, he'll compensate me with favor. And sometimes that shows up as money. But sometimes it shows up in intangible things like a blessed memory. Sometimes it shows up in demonstration like seeing manifestations as a result of answered prayer. Pray in private, secret, reward you openly and bring you into seasons of fulfillment where everything he has promised becomes yours. God, help us to hear and receive this word, to attach our faith to this word until it changes some of our decisions, until it changes our pursuit. May we pursue righteousness for when we do, and when we practice it, God, you will generously satisfy us with favor. I pray the seed of the word has been heard and received so that you can see it come to pass. You be blessed as we prepare to introduce to you Sunday, part three of this series, Righteousness, Wisdoms for Living the Best Life. Man, what a word from heaven. Bishop, we thank God for the word that he's allowing you to share right here with us for the Rock Cathedral and throughout the entire United States and the world. We would dare not leave this place without allowing you an opportunity to accept our Lord and Savior as your own personal Lord and Savior. Go ahead and pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I believe by faith according to your word that I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the, from the dead, then I am now saved. We believe by faith that if you prayed that prayer, you are saved. Man, heaven is rejoicing and so are we here at The Rock. Go ahead, write us, let us know how the word of God is changing your life each and every day with you being faithful to the word. Don't forget, please like, share, comment, tell everyone you know that God is still speaking in the earth and he's using the vessel of Bishop Hedgeman so that we can have ears to hear, hearts to receive, and we'll see lives that are changed. We thank God for your presence here on tonight. God bless you.